materials of daily use. Introduction A fiber is a kind of thread which is strong and flexible enough to make clothes, nets, ropes, etc. Fibers are of two types, natural fibers and man-made fibers. Synthetic fibers Different types of plant fibers are cotton, flax, jute, hemp, coconut and banana. Types of animal fibers Wool It is the hair from the skin of some animals like sheep, goat and camel which are twisted to make long strands. Wool is light, soft, thick and wrinkle resistant. It is made up of keratin which contains sulphur in it. Types of wool Sheep wool World's finest wool comes from the fleas of merino sheep. Fleas is a thick coat of hair on the body. Wool is collected from the sheep by cutting with clippers. This process is called shearing. Goat wool Angora, Pashmina, Kashmir are the most important breeds of goat as well as variety of wool. Camel wool Camels grow very thick coat of hair which they shed during summer. Processing of wool The raw wool is dirty and greasy. It also contains a lot of sweat. The sheared wool is cleaned by washing with detergents. After washing, the wool is treated with acid and heated to remove impurities. The fibers are then smeared with oil to make them soft. Long fibers are straightened and short ones are separated. The fibers thus obtained are washed, twisted and spun into yarn. The yarn is then used as knitting materials for sweaters, cardigans, etc. This yarn is also used for weaving woolen clothes. Breeding of sheep Improvement in the sheep variety is achieved by crossbreeding between local sheep and high-yielding exotic breeds of sheep. Silk It comes from the cocoon of the silkworm. Silkworms feed on mulberry leaves. Silk is lustrous, soft, strong, hard, wearing and is produced in long continuous strands. It is made up of keratin but does not contain sulphur in it. Because of the lustrous appearance and other desirable properties in silk, man started cultivating and breeding silkworms on a large scale. This art of rearing silkworm on a commercial scale is known as sericulture. Method used in silk farming Eggs of silkworm are collected and hatched in an incubator. They hatch into black worms called larvae or caterpillars. The larvae are fed on mulberry leaves for four to five weeks. During feeding, each larvae sheds its skin four times. The process of shedding skin is called molting. Larvae eat voraciously and grow fast. One day they stop eating, climb twigs and start spinning the cocoons. This stage is called the pupa stage. The cocoons are treated with steam so that the pupae are killed. Silk threads are collected, formed by the cocoon by a process called reeling which is done by hand. If the cocoons are left by themselves and not steamed, the pupae will develop into moths. When the moth comes out from the cocoon, the thread gets damaged. The life cycle of silkworm is shown in the figure. The silk thread is used for weaving clothes. It can be dyed into various colors. The quality and type of silk depends on the difference in the processing and the variety of silkworms. Fur. It is the soft growth of fibers covering animals like foxes, rabbits, cats, leopards, etc. Keeping and breeding of animals for fur is called fur farming. There are about 80 varieties of furs. Sources of fur include animals like beaver, ermine, fox, mink, otter, rabbit, sable, seal, cat and dog. Most important sources of fur are the animals found in cold regions where low temperature ensures growth of thick fur. Natural fiber and synthetic fiber. Take a small piece, each of two fibers and burn them. Observe closely as to how these two different fibers burn. You will notice that natural fibers burn with a flame. Synthetic fiber will melt fast and then burn. Plant and animal fiber. Burn a piece of sewing thread. 
plant and a piece of wool animal observe and smell the smoke which is produced on burning the smoke from the sewing thread will give you the smell like that of burning paper because it is made up of cellulose the smoke from the wool piece will smell like that of burning eggs or pulses because it is made up of proteins heat as a form of energy heat can also be converted into other forms of energy for example in the steam engine heat produced by the burning of coal is converted into mechanical energy which is used for pulling a train when a candle burns in air chemical energy is converted into heat and light energy in an electric heater electrical energy is converted into heat and light energy all these examples show that heat is a form of energy and various other forms of energy can be converted into heat energy temperature when we touch a hot object our hand becomes warm because heat flows from the object to our hand we say that the object is at a higher temperature than our hand if we touch a piece of ice our hands become cold because heat flows from our hand to the eyes temperature tells us how hot or cold a body is it is the degree of hotness of a body heat flows in the direction of lower temperature rises when it is cooled its temperature decreases if two bodies having unequal temperatures are brought together heat flows from the body at a higher temperature to the body at a lower temperature till the two attain the same temperature thermometers a thermometer is an instrument that measures the temperature its action is based on some physically measurable properties of substances which change when the temperature changes there are different types of thermometers alcohol and mercury are generally used in making thermometers for routine work mercury in thermometers mercury is preferred to other liquids because of the following reasons mercury is the only metal which is found in liquid state it is also a good conductor of heat it is a shining silvery white liquid which can be seen very easily and the position of the boundary edge can be read distinctly on a scale it does not stick to the wall of the thermometer it has uniform contraction and expansion it has a sufficiently low freezing point minus 39 degrees centigrade and a considerably high boiling point 357 degrees centigrade so it can be used to measure a fairly wide range of temperatures it can easily be obtained in pure form its specific heat is low a mercury thermometer is used in tropical and temperate climates and an alcohol thermometer is suitable in extremely cold climate making of a thermometer to make a mercury thermometer we take a glass tube having a fine bore and a glass bulb at one end the other end open the bulb is filled with mercury and the open end of the tube is sealed the bulb of the thermometer is kept in melting ice in a funnel as shown in figure after some time the level of mercury becomes constant to give the lower fixed point this level is marked as zero degrees centigrade or 32 degrees fahrenheit then the bulb is kept in steam to give the upper fixed point this level is marked as 100 degrees centigrade or 212 degrees fahrenheit the distance between the two fixed points is called fundamental interval it is divided into 100 equal parts in case of the celsius scale and 180 equal parts on the fahrenheit scale each division is a degree celsius or a degree fahrenheit the celsius scale this scale was made by celsius 1701 to 1744 temperature is measured in degree celsius the lower fixed point is taken as zero degrees celsius and the upper fixed point as 100 degrees celsius the normal temperature of the human body is nearly 37 degrees celsius the fahrenheit scale this scale was developed by fahrenheit 1686 to 1736 temperature is measured in degree fahrenheit degree f the lower fixed point is taken as 32 degrees fahrenheit and the upper fixed point as 212 degrees fahrenheit as shown in the figure 
the normal temperature of the human body is 98.4 degrees Fahrenheit. Different modes of transfer of heat. There are three different processes by which heat transfer takes place. They are conduction, convection and radiation. Conduction. Heat travels through solids without the actual displacement of the particles. The process in which heat is transferred from one particle to another in the direction of lower temperature without the actual movement of the particles of the medium called conduction. Experiment Conduction Fix a number of drawing pins by their heads by means of wax onto a metal rod at a regular distance from one another as shown in figure. Fix the metal rod to a clamp stand. Heat the rod at one end with a candle. What do you observe? As the rod is heated, you will find that the drawing pins drop one by one, starting from the hot end. The pin marked one drops first, then the pin two drops, and so on. The drawing pins drop because the wax melts by the heat, which travels from the hot end of the rod to the cold end by conduction. Conditions required for conduction of heat. There are two important conditions for heat to be conducted from one object to another. They are, two objects should have bodily contact with each other. The temperatures of the two objects should be different. Good and bad conductors of heat. Take rods of equal thickness of iron, copper, aluminium and glass. Dip them in wax up to equal length. Now, insert each one of these rods in a vessel. Pour hot water in the vessel. You will find, as the heat travels through the rods, wax coating on the rods start melting. In different rods, wax melts to different extents. This activity shows that different substances conduct heat differently. This also shows that substances like iron, copper and aluminium are good conductors of heat, whereas glass is a bad conductor of heat. Heat conduction through air. Hold a test tube in an inclined position as shown in figure Heat the lower end of the test tube. Now, insert a finger into the mouth of the test tube. You will feel only some heat at the upper end. This activity shows that air is a bad conductor of heat. Uses of good and bad conductors of heat. Some important uses of good and bad conductors of heat are given above. Convection. Liquids and gases are heated by another process of heat transfer called convection. Take a box of glass sides with two holes one at the side and the other at the top as shown in figure. Place a burning candle in the box. Produce smoke at the side hole of the box by burning a drinking straw. You will see smoke entering the box through the side hole and rising through the top hole of the box. If you place your hand above the hole, you can feel hot air rising upwards. Convection currents in water. Take a beaker and fill it with water. Drop some crystals of potassium permanganate in it. Now, Heat the beaker and watch the movement of the colored solution. In this activity, the liquid at the bottom of the flask gets heated first. This warm liquid, being lighter than the surrounding cool liquid, rises up. The colder liquid moves down, gets heated and in turn rises again. The heat is transferred from the hot water at the bottom of the beaker to the cooler water at the top by the actual movement of the water itself. Some applications of convection currents some of the important applications of convection currents are listed central heating of buildings. In winter, many hotels and houses are heated centrally on the principle of convection currents. Ventilation in houses. Ventilation in houses is provided keeping in view that the air we breathe out is hotter and lighter. Ventilators at the top provide outlets for the stale and warm air while fresh air enters the room through doors and windows. Land and sea breezes. During daytime, land gets heated more quickly than the sea water. This is because water has high specific heat capacity, whereas sand and earth have low specific heat capacities. Hot air above the land rises up, and cold air from the sea moves towards the land. This is called the sea breeze. During night, land cools more quickly than the sea water. So, Hot air above the sea rises up and cold air moves from the land towards the sea, as shown in the figure above. This is called the land breeze. Oceanic Currents 
the ocean water near the equator is heated by the sun to a much higher temperature than the water near the poles of the earth. This is because the sun's rays fall almost normally in the equatorial region, but slantingly in the polar region. The ocean water in the equatorial region expands and becomes lighter, but the water in the polar region remains cold and heavy. Therefore, convection currents of warm water flow on the surface of ocean from equator towards the poles. Below the surface of the ocean, currents of cold water flow from the poles towards the equator. These currents control the temperature of the ocean and are called oceanic currents. Radiation The process of transmission of heat in which heat energy travels in straight lines from the hotter body to the colder one without heating the medium is called radiation and the heat energy transmitted by the process of radiation is called radiant heat or thermal radiation. Absorption of radiations by a body Take two tin cans of the same size and paint one of them black from outside and the other with a light color. Pour equal amounts of water in each and leave them in the midday sun for two hours. Measure the temperature of the water in each one of them. Which water is warmer? You will find that the water in the black tin is warmer. This shows that black tin has absorbed more heat than the light colored tin. Let us heat the tins over a fire and keep them in a room. We find that black tin cools faster than the other. This shows that the black tin radiates more heat than the other tin. So, we find that black tin absorbs and radiates more heat. This is a general rule which is true for all objects. That is, a good absorber is a good radiator and a poor absorber is a poor radiator of heat. Some Applications of Radiation Some important applications of radiation in our daily life are given above. White and light-colored clothes are more suitable in summer because they absorb very little amount of the sun's heat and thus keeps our bodies cool. Dark-colored clothes are more suitable in winter because they absorb most of the radiant heat of the sun and keeps us warm. Room heaters have polished reflectors at the back of the heating element so that they absorb very little heat and reflect most of it. The base of a cooking utensil is painted black so that it absorbs more heat and cooks food quickly. Radiators of cars and air conditioners are painted black so as to radiate maximum amount of heat to produce cooling effect. Corrosion of metals You must have noticed that iron articles and utensils when exposed to moist air get gradually coated with reddish brown coating called rust. Rusting is a slow oxidation process. Chemically, rust is hydrate ferric oxide. Metal surface interacts with oxygen, moisture and other gases present in air and slowly get coated with oxide, hydroxide or carbonate of the metal. Thus, metals are eaten away or corroded. Corrosion of metals causes great economic loss. It is estimated that about 15% of the total world production of iron is destroyed by corrosion. This corrosion causes a very serious loss to national economy. Corrosion also causes various accidents due to wear and tear of bridges, building structures, rails, etc. where iron is a main component. Conditions and Effects of Corrosion Two conditions are necessary for the rusting of iron. Presence of air oxygen and presence of water. Effect of corrosion. Rust is soft and porous. It gradually falls off from the surface of iron and then the iron below starts rusting. Thus, rusting is a continuous process and it gradually eats away iron due to which an iron object loses its strength. And if an iron object is left in damp air or water for a long time, it rusts away completely. It is clear that corrosion is a wasteful process and should be prevented. Methods of Preventing Corrosion Some of the methods are highlighted in the table above. Reactivity Series of Metals Reactivity Series of Metals is shown in the table. Seawater is salty. The salinity of seawater is defined as the mass of dissolved salts present in 1 kg of seawater. The main salts present in seawater are sodium chloride, 
magnesium chloride, magnesium sulfate, magnesium bromide and potassium chloride. Seawater contains 35 grams of total salts per kg of seawater. It contains about 28 grams of sodium chloride per kg of seawater. It is because of this high percentage of sodium chloride that seawater is considered a very good source of table salt or common salt. The salinity of seawater remains constant. As water evaporates from the sea, it forms clouds and falls as rain. The rain on falling on land dissolves more salts and minerals and brings it to the sea through rivers. Thus, the sea continues to get salts and minerals and compensates the loss of salt which we remove from sea. Thus, the level of salinity is kept constant. The process of removing salts from saline water is known as desalination. It is necessary to desalinate water to make it potable. This can be done by the process of distillation. Crystallization The process of separating a pure substance in the form of crystals from the hot saturated solution by cooling is called crystallization. This method is used to purify solid substances.